And this is how cults start. They never start with saying, hey, we're going to teach a new religion. They always start like a cancer, like a virus that goes in and takes the host and makes the host sick. Hey, everybody, we've got some drama, but we got to talk about it. Can't shy away from it. Coming up next. Hey everybody, welcome again. I'm Richard. Thanks for subbing. I've got a number of subscriptioners lately. Uh, thanks for coming along for the ride. It's been good. I'm working on a home studio, so I'm going to be able to hopefully record a lot more frequently and be a little bit more up to date with certain things and talking about various issues. Uh, we have drama. <laughs> I had one. It was a commenter i think they watched the first like four seconds because i was like pretending to love the drama in one of my videos about ed Litton, the president of southern or excuse me uh sbc in general about his plagiarism and it was like you love it you love the you love the drama you love you live for it it was pretty funny no i don't live for it <laughs> in fact if i think in that video uh and a few others i say i don't want to make this video i'd rather make another video i'd rather make a video only fighting against atheists, unbelievers, agnostics, fools who dance around and pretend like they have the truth, but they don't. But part of this channel is being contra mundum. That's a contra being against, of course, where we get like contradiction and things, contrary. And then mundum is the world. So being against the world, but for the world. And the, the church does exist in the world. It isn't of the world, but it's in the world. Uh, Jesus reminds us that we're we're in the world, we're going to have trouble, but he's overcome the world. And sadly, there is a lot of world and worldliness in the church. And this is no different here. So we've got Adam Greenway, who's the president of Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary, sending a strongly worded letter to the president of Mid-America Baptist Theological Seminary. That's in Memphis, so not too far away between Dallas and Memphis, Tennessee. In America is not one of the six Southern Baptist seminaries. <clears throat> it is kind of an unofficial one. A lot of Southern Baptists go there. I believe at one point all the professors had to be Southern Baptists. They had to belong to a church. It was loosely associated at one point with Adrian Rogers Church, which was Bellevue Heights, I think it is. Bellevue Baptist, Bellevue Baptist. Um, now the main, uh, the main pastor there was the former president of the SBC, uh, which was... Um, I forget his name. I don't know. He was the president before J.D. Greer. Anyway, Enemies Within the Church is a documentary, and we're going to watch it right now, and then we're going to read the letter, and then we're going to read a response. What happened to the church, to the living, powerful, transformative, nation-shaking Christianity? What they're trying to do is completely demolish Western civilization and then to rebuild it in a just society. How do you break down American Christianity? I think the problem today in our culture is many of our words have been co-opted and stolen and dumbed down and reversed. Social justice is sold as something that it isn't. Critical race theory is sold as something that it isn't. Whiteness has caused blindness of heart. Whiteness has caused blindness of heart. When you preach victimization, it always leads to vengeance and vice. Us against them, me against you. I want my pound of flesh. American churches today are where the universities were 10 years ago. Pretty heavily Marxist. They're not quite there yet, but they're well on the way. Many of the seminaries and Bible colleges are definitely already there. That message that they're going out and taking the world is not, you need to repent of your sin, receive Christ. Instead, the message that you actually have is they are under the weight of racism or sexism or homophobia, and then we need to unify them together. I'm gay. I'm 29. I'm a youth pastor in New Jersey. I'm straight, and I'm also a youth pastor in New Jersey. We're planning on sharing life together for the rest of our lives, which we're not totally sure what that looks like. Obviously, Nick is straight, and he does plan on getting married. 
Uh, when he has a wife one day, she'll make those decisions with us. The future damage of what we're doing now is just going to be enormous. The entire fabric of family, personal wealth, private property, all those things are out there. And everything is the state. They believe the state is God. They don't define justice the same way as the scripture. Oh, no. It's going to be an equality, all right. And it's going to be a totalitarian Marxist justice. All right, so we can see that there's just lots and lots of people talking, lots of guys having very good, I would say, conversation points about what's happening in Western civilization. And there's like a clip, and it, you can see it in early on, on the first 30 seconds or so, of like a kind of domed building, uh, and it's like tan. That's Southwestern. It doesn't say, it's not about Southwestern. It doesn't say Southwestern is horrible and evil or anything like that. It doesn't even use the words. It doesn't have anybody from Southwestern to my knowledge. Maybe it does. But it's not obvious at all. So why in the world would Adam Greenway send this letter? Except to protect himself, maybe, and others like uh, the president of Southeastern which is Danny Aiken, who does have professors teaching critical race theory, but of course he's not really teaching it. Uh, you know, they kind of dance around it. They do it and then they backpedal. Oh, well, we weren't really, we we're just teaching about it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, especially those my brothers and sisters in the SBC, this is what they did 30, 40 years ago. They taught about liberalism in the church. They taught about theological um, unbelief. You know, Jesus didn't rise from the dead, the virgin birth is a myth, blah, blah, blah. But they just, quote, unquote, taught about it. That's how they got around it. Because the pews, the, the people in the churches, and even a lot of pastors, did not believe. And the ship, you know, went from being ragingly liberal 40, 50 years ago and turned back around. Well, in the last 10 years, we've seen it kind of turn back in a different direction, which is now this identity politics, intersectionality, and now we know the term woke and wokeism and so on where people are making distinctions, showing partiality. God doesn't show partiality, though. And that's the thing that we must understand. God doesn't show these things. There's no Greek nor Jew, but all are one in Christ. Men, women, boys, and girls. Anybody can come to the knowledge of the truth. And the battle now used to be inerrancy. 40 years ago, 50 years ago, the Chicago Statement in 1978, the Chicago Statement on inerrancy and you know, RC, a young R.C. Sproul and a J.I. Packer and a bunch of everybody you've read and know, some of the authors behind me, you'd know these guys that signed these statements. Well, 40 years later, we now have people doubting, not the inerrancy. Oh, the Bible's inerrant. Of course, of course it is. But it's not sufficient. Now, they won't say that. Again, they're being more smart, more duplicitous. Now, are they always on this page? I'm not calling Adam Greenway an unbeliever and he's unrepentant and he's a wicked, horrible human being. I'm not saying that, or Danny Aiken or anybody else. But what I'm saying is they're facilitating the ideas at minimum. They might be. I don't know. God knows the heart. But they're facilitating these ideas and leaving in this thing because of these grievances, these grievance studies and all this other stuff that is run rampant since the sexual revolution of the 1960s in college campuses. But now we want equity. Everybody gets the same, which is communism, right? That's exactly what it is. It's communism. And you have this elect few group people at the top and everybody else at the bottom. Now, I don't know why evangelical leaders, I need some water. I don't know why evangelical leaders are fighting against this. So let's, let's read this. And what does he say? So this is Adam Greenway. Southwestern uh, seal right on top. And then it says, Dear President Spradlin, I write to you to express my deep disappointment, deep disappointment, that the institution you lead has plans to film premiere of enemies within the church, quote unquote, quote unquote, this Saturday, which is tomorrow, uh, November 20th. In apparent coordination, film's trailer contains campus footage of the institution I am privileged to lead, overlaid with a narrative insinuating of, insu ins insinuations, there we go, of Marxism, presumably intended to leave viewers with the mistaken impression that Southwestern is something other than Orthodox, Baptist, and Evangelical. All those just, that doesn't matter. Where your words, this is the thing where I want to pause. Your words don't matter very much. It's your actions. And we know this, right? You have children, especially those of us who have children or grandchildren, you know this. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. And they go do that again. Oh, but I said I'm sorry. 
I don't care if you said, I'm sorry. I don't care if you say you believe the Bible or that, oh, I'm an evangelical. Well, there's evangelicals in 2016 and 2020, you know, polls and voting and this and that, that, you know, go to church once a month. That's not evangelical. Well, this guy's an evangelical. LGBT evangelicals. Da, 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 evangelicals. I don't, I'm sorry. No, evangelical is the evangel, the gospel. We are gospel people. I mean, I'm going to make a video at some point saying why I'm not an evangelical because these clowns aren't evangelicals and they're co-opting this word just like they co-opted the word fundamentalist and Christian and Protestant and everything else. You have to have something new. Anyway, back to the letter. I take strong umbrage. Umbrage, that's a good word. To this such a scandalous and scurrilous slander. Three times alliteration particularly when it is apparently condoned by the institution such as yours. Okay, so there's no slander going on at all. Like, it just showed like a half second or a second clip of Southwestern and talking about seminaries. Well, here's the thing, Dr. Greenway. Has critical race theory, intersectionality, wokeism in general, been taught in any of the classrooms at Southwestern? If you say yes, well, then they have some reason to question your orthodox, evangelical, and Baptist views because those don't comport with scripture at all, at all. I don't care that Eric Mason wrote a book called Woke Church. I don't care that Jamar Tisby has some books on christianbook.com. I don't care that Jarvis Williams is a professor at Southern Seminary in Kentucky. That doesn't matter. These don't comport with scripture. They don't fit. It's a cult, okay? CRT, critical theory in general, is a cult. And this is how cults start. They never start with saying, hey, we're gonna teach a new religion. They always start like a cancer, like a virus that goes in and takes the host and makes the host sick. It doesn't have any actual substance in and of itself, just like darkness has actually nothing at all. It's only light. It's the absence of light is darkness. But as soon as light comes, darkness gets chased away every time, both spiritually, of course, and physically. So he's really strong with that, as if this whole video, this whole documentary is about Southwestern. Not even close. Furthermore, I believe your late predecessor in office, B. Gray Allison, would strongly disapprove. So now he starts citing, he cites this guy and he cites Adrian Rogers as well, um, who's, who more or less helped found Mid-America as, as authority. Like, oh, you're not going to listen to me. Listen to this guy. Listen to this guy. Eh, that's pretty weak. That's pretty weak. Especially since there isn't like, Southwestern sucks. Southwestern is a den of thieves. It is a wicked place of cultural Marxism. It doesn't say any of that. Jesus, well, you know, meek and mild Jesus. Jesus would have, Jesus flipped over tables in the temple. He called them full of dead men's bones. The leaders, the establishment. He called the big Eva of first century all the things that either foxes, dogs, these are insults. These are, these are harsh words for those who claim to know righteousness, and yet it's far from them. Okay, so don't think, well, I just, oh, we just gotta be nice. If you ever heard the 11th commandment, Vodi Bakum, um, I'm re doing a book. You wanna check that out here if you want. Um, fault Lines. He wrote, wrote that book. He's written other books. He's preaching. He would often say, you know, the 11th commandment, thou shalt be nice and we don't care about the other 10. Well, it's not about being nice. I, I, I hope I'm not being mean right now, but it's not about being like nice or mean. It's about the truth, right? And just like somebody who says, hey, you got cancer. You got lung cancer. You got to quit smoking. You got to start eat, exercising. You got to start eating. If you want to kick this thing, you got to do these things. Well, that's just not very nice. You ruined my day. I was going to go hang out with my kids, my grandkids. Now it's doctors mean. Oh, man. I don't care. The doctors, that's his job is to tell you the truth. Well, as ministers of the gospel, people in the pews, whether you're trained or not, doesn't matter. Whether you're a Christian, you have a relationship with the living God through Christ in the spirit. The truth matters. Okay. And breeding some sort of weird, twisted, demented hybrid of cultural Marxism or communism with biblical Christianity is going to send you to hell because of your unbelief, not because of cultural Marxism in and of itself, but because of your unbelief, because you're trusting some other system, some other works-based righteousness. That's all it is. It's literally nothing new. There's nothing new under the sun. 
Solomon was correct 3,000 plus years ago. There is nothing new under the sun. But Dr. Greenway, again, if critical race theory is being taught, well, then they have some reason to be concerned. That's why they made this documentary. That's why Mid-America is playing it. They're not being political. You are, it seems like. Now, maybe you're not. Maybe you're more concerned. What is this, little fuzz thing? I don't know. Some stain. I'm like, anyway. <laughs> Squirrel. But if there isn't, no big deal. Like, it's like a kid. You're like, hey, my son, did you take a cookie? Your mom just made cookies. There were 24 cookies here. Now there's 23 cookies. What's going on? Oh, I didn't take a cookie. Now, if he didn't take a cookie, no problem, right? If his sister did and she's in the corner and she's got crumbs on her face, well, he's off the hook. But if they coerced together or he took a cookie and gave it to her or they split it, whatever, well, then you'd be like, oh, I don't know. Well, no, 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 no. I am with strong umbrage, very upset that you have con God said I'm uh, accused. You're accusing me. Well, if, but if, but you just said you're, there's no problem here. So why are you having a problem? Uh, well, I mean, he, uh, if you're not guilty, no big deal. But if you are, oh no, it's not Adrian Roger. Excuse me. Uh, that's further down in the other letter. Uh, former academic advisor, Vice President Howard Bickers wrote in 1992 that concerning Mid America, the seminary prohibits any negative criticism of any Southern Baptist agency, leader program, or speakers in the classroom and its chapel services. Leaders of the, Southern, the seminary believe that this institution best fulfills its purpose when Christ-like spirit and stance of positive support is engendered. Consequently, the energies of the seminary are focused upon the training of students rather than upon participation in divisive issues within the con convention. Okay, so does that divisive issue include critical race theory and intersectionality? Because if it does, well then, why are you teaching it? If you're teaching it. I don't know. I didn't go to Southwestern. They're teaching it at Southern, where I went. Are they still? Is it still more like on the horizon or, or not on the horizon and kind of talked about undercover? Yeah, no, no, it's, it's way more known. So they're not doing it as much, which is good, right? You expose the evil, the cockroaches run, right? They, you turn the light on, they run away. Talking about the conservative resurgence, but this is the conservative ba Baptist network which of course is kind of like, as far as I know, Tom Askell and a lot of those guys um, and wanted not Ed Litton, who went to Southwestern. I did a video on him a while back, um, who's a known plagiarist. Like it's just, he's stealing and lying about it, whatever he's doing, it's a horrible example. Even if it's like the best possible scenario, it's still a bad example. You're not fit to be a pastor. You're not fit especially to be the president of the biggest institution or biggest denomination in the country. And yet Adam Greenway sat there and nodded his head. You know, this is about a month and a half ago. And you look at the comments and you look at the, I don't even, actually, I don't think there were comments available, but the thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs down was like five, 10 to one negative. I prayerfully ask you to reconsider the decision to show this film with and withdraw support from those working to divide our convention by engaging in untruthful attacks against the SBC entities like Southwestern Seminary. Okay, so again, if there's no truth to it, then they're the ones in the wrong, right? The conservative Baptist network, enemies within the church, you are wrong. You are wrong if there is no truth to these claims, right? Just like Kyle Rittenhouse, he's innocent. He was proven innocent. Videos show that he was innocent. I just did a video on that recently. And yet, what? People said he's a mass murderer, he's this, he's this, he's this, he's, he's, he's an active shooter, he's a white supremacist, blah, blah, blah. They're slander. That's slander. It's not slander if it's true, <laughs> right? Like, it's not slander to call Ed Litton the president of South, uh, South, South, the Southern Baptist Convention. It's not slander to call him a plagiarist, because he is. I know that's hard. And I know we've like, had like 40, 50 years of like really niceness. And, I, and trust me, I struggle with it in my heart. Like, I really like, I like being a people person or I, I don't like it. Uh, I am a people person and I have to fight against it because that's my flesh. Because the truth is more important than my comfort. And I hope that's for you too. That's what I want with this channel. And I know there's, you know, tone and oh, this and oh, well, what, I can't you, you just preach the gospel. Well, this is the gospel. 
And if you have another gospel, which is critical race theory, wokeism, intersectionality, the whole gamut, just basically grievance studies, all that, that's saying that person's oppressed, this person's the oppressor, you can't change, there's no redemption. Well, that's not the gospel. It matters. Truth matters. It matters a lot. So it looks like, this is a Newsweek article. I'm not going to read all this. Um, Although the conservative Baptist network did not produce the documentary Enemies Within the Church, it merely is facilitating a screening. So it's not a premiere, it's just a screening of it. We are extremely concerned about the documented evidence it presents, and it should be to all Southern Baptists. So he calls out Adam Greenway. So it's good. Don't back down. Very good. This is just yesterday. Southwestern. Seminaries, inclusion of this film does not appear unfounded. Ooh, I'm uncomfortable. Oh, it's making me sad. It's making me have a tummy ache. I don't like this. Then it goes on. Should a Southern Baptist entity encourage women to violate scripture's teaching that women should not ha- teach or have authority over a man in the church by affirming female preacher? Number two, condone plagiarism. Uh, oh, it's so bad. It's so bad. By inviting a chapel to chapel, the current SBC president, who has been shown to be irrefutably engaged in sermon plagiarism, number three, instruct a professor not to share his personal testimony regarding the LGBTQ movement, and then issue an inaccurate press release saying that directive was not given, only to have audio recordings released demonstrating that the seminary indeed appears to have borne false witness? Number four, have a professor teach that in order to understand scripture properly, a diverse group of minorities must look at it from a specific standpoint, such as skin color and gender, standpoint hermeneutics, or standpoint epistemology. Number five, facilitate non-disclosure agreements, NDAs, with those forced or encouraged to end their seminary employment. We believe, and it goes on in the last paragraph, that Southern Baptists, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, are wise and able to arrive at the conclusion that glorifies our Lord and advances the gospel. Documented information and concerns should be considered instead of suppressed. And this is what the academy has been doing. Secular academy for years. There is no, this is what the argument was in the 60s and 70s with Berkeley and others. Free speech, free speech, free speech, because they wanted to go against the man. Well, at that point, the man was mostly Christian, mostly a Christian nation with Christian principles and this and this and this. We, we still have the fumes of that, but it's very, very rare uh, that it has much impact. Now, free speech, those leftists have won and they don't want free speech. Just like standard commies, once they win, it's like, let us in, let us to the table. And then they literally shove you down, kick you in the face and take away your food and say, yeah, this is our table now. We just want to spot at the table. We just want to get married. We just want to have a voice. We just want to do this. We just want to do that. And now, oh, no, now get out. Get the crap out of my house. No, you, this, this isn't your house. Uh, oh, it's my house now. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's what they've done. That's what the leftists do. That's the leftist paradigm. Know it. Please be aware of it and fight against it. So it shouldn't be oppressed, suppressed, he says. But encouraged, Conservative Baptist Network encouraged Southern Baptists to watch the documentary and prayerfully make their own decisions. And then it says, Aiden Rogers at the bottom, it is better to be divided by the truth than united in error. (sighs) Ladies and gentlemen, these are trying times. They really are. And people are lying left and right. They're gaslighting. That's another video for another time. Acting as though this thing isn't the way the thing is. You're scratching your head and you're thinking, I really thought it was like this. I really thought that the gospel was that. I really thought that we were all on the same page regarding this thing. It's like, oh, no, 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 no. We've always been like this. We've always been about X, Y, or Z. And you're like, I don't think so. Well, they're changing it. They change the definitions. They change the wording. They change all these things. Now, I'm not accusing Adam Greenway in and of himself of doing all this. But what I am doing is he's playing ball with them. And he gets then accolades, especially on Twitter, with all the leftist people, the Gospel Coalition people, and those who are on the left side of quote-unquote evangelicalism. In general, this is not acceptable. And it's going to get called out by me, and hopefully by you, whether it's in your church, whether it's even at your school, your wherever, your family. The gospel's at stake. The gospel is always at stake. Biblical fidelity is always a fight. Okay, no one ever strays into conservatism. No one ever is like, hey, you know what? I'm going to actually go this route. No, it's always a leftward drift. Always. 
Nobody ever drifts right. You have to make a hard decision. Cut it off. I'm going right. I'm doing this because this is convictionally what we need to do. Whether that's political, whether that's uh, religious with the scripture in general, whether that's just living your life. You, we slowly drift because we're sinful people, right? The world has fallen. We are fallen. But Jesus has overcome the world. This is why I'm against the world. That's why I want to help you be against the world too. Being against it, but for it. Because like you, the world was lost, right? Or the, like the lost, like, like the world, you were once lost. So was I, if you now know Christ. But if you don't know Christ, you can come to him. You can turn to him now. He'll take you. But you have to confess with your mouth that he is Lord and believe that he was raised from the dead. And then you're saved. But then you're saved unto good works. You're saved for righteousness sake, for his name. Walking in a manner worthy of your calling. Putting off the flesh and putting on the works of the spirit. Because why the work, by the works of the flesh, no, by the works of the flesh, nobody's justified. Nobody. It doesn't matter whether it's critical race theory or 20 years ago, it's materialistic evolution or 80 years ago, it's something else or 150 years ago, it's something else or 1800 years ago, it's some other issue about church history within the culture. We have men and women who have fought these battles whether it was against the Roman Catholic Church, the established church before the split between East and West and in the 12th century, whether it was at the 16th century with those like Martin Luther and Zwingli and Calvin. Fighting is needed. We need to fight now. Now's the time. It's, it's time. My goal, helping you be against the world for the sake of the world. So if you find this helpful, uh, please go ahead and comment and share. Uh, like it as well. And uh, subscribe. If you haven't already subscribed, it really does help it. I've had a number of subscribers, new subscribers lately. Thank you so much if you've made it this far. Uh, thank you, thank you. Um, the more you do it, the more you subscribe, the more you watch, the more you this, the, the, the further it goes out. And really my goal is to be stuck on the gospel, chained to the Bible. Because truth matters. It's worth it. It's so worth it. The world is falling away. The world is passing away. So are its lusts, so are its desires. But Jesus is open. Let's go serve him. Take care.